kind of step number two of creating a very simplified, what I call a medical illustration of blood vessels of the hand. In the previous lesson, we have, let's just cover all of these, utilized a photograph of our own hand. We've then made a base art using the pen tool of just a hand. We've added some details with the fingernails and wrinkles, and now we're ready to start doing some blood vessels. So first things first, I like to come in, oh, we gotta make a brand new layer, and we'll call it Vessel Template. And I'm gonna go up to File Place. I like to do this, I know you can drag and drop this over, but, um, I think it's smart to always browse. That means you know you're in the right location if you happen to download it and then copy and paste that over into another folder, but but it happens to link from the download folder and maybe you trash that. If you go to open this later on, then that image won't be there. So I like downloading the image to my local computer and placing it from there. It takes a few extra steps, but it guarantees me I am more in the right spot, which is obviously super important. So I'm gonna hit place, and at this point I can come and click, Command Z to back out just a little bit. And I can see it's way smaller. So while I've got everything else locked, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna grab my main selection tool, and I'm gonna scale this up just a little. Close this over here. Um, at this point, obviously you notice you can't see, so I can come over to my properties window, you can also usually see it up here in your control panel depending on how wide your screen is and change the opacity down a lot until you can see kind of both. I want to be able to see the outline of my hand and then I want to be able to see the outline of this really nice medical imagery. Um, and again, I'm using a public domain medical imagery in lieu of using someone else's illustration. And the reason is behind that is someone else's illustration has their style, it has their artistic licensing, it has their nuances of making it theirs. And while you can use those as sort of inspiration, you want to, whenever possible, get an actual photograph reference for something when you're doing digital illustrations of any sort. The digital part of it is taking that very crazy, for us, for our exact example, crazy actuality of blood vessels and making it a little bit more simple so that they have a quick reference for, say, a textbook or an illustration in like a pamphlet. So always, always get a photograph when you can. Again, just like your hand, I wouldn't use someone else's illustrated hand as a base template for my hand when I can just as quickly take a photograph of my own hand. Okay, so I am turning that down, and now I'm going to come over here, and you can see I'm, I'm just going to kind of manipulate the rotation. I'm going to make sure that when you're scaling it that you're holding shift. That forces it to stay in... Um, good ratio instead of getting all wonky and then I'm gonna kind of bring this over here and you kind of got to go back and forth it's a little too big I'm sort of lining up the finger size like if I can get these pretty close to each other you have to ignore that dog barking in the background and notice I'm never gonna get it exact but I could get it pretty close their thumb on the medical imagery is much closer and mine spread out. But I'm pretty happy with this as at least a base template. It gets me a starting point to work from. So once you've done that, then it's time to lock that layer. Always get in the habit of going back, forth, back, forth, working in your layers in a smart way. It's just it's gonna help you out in the long run. So I'm locking that layer so now I can't mess it up. But you can see that it's there. And if you have to flip back at any point, kind of see yours a little bit better, don't be afraid to do that. The more you do it now, even if it feels a little uncomfortable, the more comfortable you'll get at doing it. So I'm gonna make a new layer and now I'm gonna start the actual artwork for these blood vessels. So I'm gonna call these vessels. I am gonna zoom in and what you're gonna do is using the pen tool, I'm gonna turn off, I like to do it usually up in my control panel, the fill, I'm gonna go to none. 
and stroke it can just stay black for right now we're going to change that to red later on um, to be obviously the color more of the blood vessels and I think that sometimes people that are new to Illustrator obviously can get in here and think oh I could come in and kind of just keep adding lines right be careful because you want each of these you want each of these to be their own little line so we're gonna instead of just keeping going we're gonna break them apart so I'm gonna delete those and I have my medical image and I can reference over to the side my another illustration that's simplified already to help me kind of just refresh what I'm looking at but I'm going to break all these vessels down into just a few lines. I'm not going to have all these lines. So my first is going to be this like, upside down U shape. I'm going to come up. I'm going to give it a little bit of variety, but not tons. I'm following close-ish to the, the imagery but not exact, simplifying a little. I'm not getting every single one of these little lines, which you could very much do. And it, with the right amount of detail, it could be beautiful. You just wanna be consistent. And we're gonna be consistently simple with this one. Um, okay, so I have that first one. I like, for this, I'm gonna start with the thumb because I get, I, I like tackling this hard part first. I can see from a medical, another illustration that I've got, one of these lines should trail up my thumb. I can't see them exactly, but I can see that a few come in here and I can't see exactly where they go up the imagery. But I'm gonna start one and then I'm gonna trail it up to the inside of my thumb. Kind of like the reference illustration that I have. Okay. Simple, very simple. And you're gonna keep doing this around. So now I know that I should have one on the between the index finger and the thumb side, and it should start by coming off of the same vessel as this thumb one, kind of close to the base. You're not gonna necessarily know this, it's anatomy, but you're trying to be exact to the best of your knowledge, limited knowledge. Okay, so I'm gonna trail this up the inside of my finger. This is where I'm taking a little artistic licensing because I'm not seeing that per se in this um, vessel template, but I know it needs to be there. Okay, next I can very clearly see one, two, three, four other offshoots of this. So I'm going to keep those pretty close. This one's going to go to the inside. And on one of the sides, I'll trail it up inside of my index finger. And then I'll come back in and make another line going up the inside of my like middle finger. And if you at any point you need to change something, grab your direct select. If this was a little too far in... And again, I'm not necessarily seeing a lot. I can see this pretty clear, and it looks like, you know, it shoots off there in the imagery. So I'm pretty close, just off just a little bit. Okay, keep going, and I'm going to come to this one, go up the ins, the pinky side of that finger, add this other side to it. If it gets too far over, which seems like I keep doing that move that point over. Don't be afraid to zoom in if you need to, smooth out lines if you need to, if they get too sharp. Also, don't be afraid to move some of these points. I think, you know, moving points is one of the more difficult pieces of learning Illustrator. So if you're new to Illustrator, just moving these points may seem very difficult. Don't be afraid to sort of take your time. I think for new illustrators, I like to click on the line where I can see what I'm working with. Notice how they're all white, meaning they're all open. Then I can click once to get a selection. And then you can either click, hold, drag that around, or sometimes I even use the arrows on my keyboard. So right now I'm using the arrows on my keyboard with my left hand 
I think you got to get really used to using your right and left hand and kind of getting those to work together well. Okay. And then the second to last one, I can pretty easily see this guy in this imagery. Keep going. I'm going to hug the inside of my hand. I'm not making this perfect. This is more about getting more comfortable with the pen tool. And then the last one, I'm probably going to have, I guess, this one. I'll use this line as my reference for that. It's not exact, but, and then you can't really see it past there, but I can tell from anatomy books and other, other illustrations that there needs to be a vessel going up that side of the hand. So like just real basic, you can see that you've got these kind of black lines and now I'm going to show you this great trick of how to turn those into a really simplified illustration and have some techniques and illustrator do some of the work for you. So you've blocked in those. I've made it look easy. Pause this video, redo those if you have to. Don't forget this direct select option when you want to move tiny little points and be very patient. These are single pixel points. It's very fine detailing to move these points and these anchors and these lines. So you're just working your dexterity with the fine motor detailing of Illustrator. Okay. So now that we have these strokes, we're gonna add some thickness, especially to the ones like this one up close. So you kinda of have to evaluate. Let me select them all. And I'm gonna beef all of them up. Then I'm gonna take my one main one and beef it up even more. So I'm gonna get all of these kind of close to what I think they need to be that looks good, showcases them but also doesn't make my illustration look too silly, which it all looks kind of silly right now as you're looking at it, not knowing the final outcome. And then because I know the anatomy, I'm gonna beef up this one stroke knowing that this blood vessel would be much thicker. And that just help, which you can see straight from this image. Like notice how much thinner these get. This is just kind of a, a trick of making that sort of occur. Um, and that's pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is change this color. Now I'm, I'm going to adjust them in my tools panel and I'm going to grab double click on my stroke and I'm going to get a nice dark red, blood red. And I'm not going too dark. I'm not doing too gray. I want pretty saturated deep red and that's fine. Now, while those are selected, I am going to go with my left hand. I'm using my right hand with my digital drawing tablet, my left hand on the keyboard. Remember, it's all about learning how to work both hands at the same time to be a really good digital illustrator. I'm going to Command C to copy. You could go up and hit copy, but I always use the shortcut a lot. I'm going to then go Command Shift V to paste in place. And what that means, now notice, this layer just got really big. These down here are the first, this up here, that are selected with this aqua highlight next to them are my second layer, the ones that I just pasted in place. And you'll say, well, nothing happened. And that's because you're just not seeing them because right now it's exactly the same. It's the exact same stroke size. It's the exact same color. So first what we're going to do is change the color to a much brighter red. We're not gonna make it a highlight red yet. We're gonna make it just a deep red, like a nice bright red. Now I can see a little bit of the color. If I moved these, there, you could see that they're there. I'm gonna Command Undo, Command Z to undo. Now what you wanna do is turn down the stroke. Start at one. It depends on the size of your overall image, but for us, one is probably going to work. And what you're gonna have now is this thin line and directly below it is this dark one. And it's actually, you can't even really select the underside since the lines are exactly on top of each other. You'd have to select both. Then using shift, 
click, you could click off of the bright red one, and now I have that dark one selected that's underneath it. So if you needed that for some reason, just select both, and then unselect using shift, just the top to get your bottom. Okay, now what we're gonna do is blend these, and this is where the magic really happens. So we'll start with the largest because that'll be the most obvious change. So we're gonna select both of these by click hold dragging over, and I get these little question marks, it's because, again, both those strokes are selected. Illustrator doesn't know which one, which color to populate, meaning there's more than one color selected, so we're just not going to give it a color profile right now. Um, perfect. That's what we want. We're going to go up to Object. We're going to go up to Blend. We're going to hit Blend Options at first. Make sure smooth color is there, but you can see that specified steps and specified distance are there. There's a rhyme or reason to why you might use some of those. For this, we're going to use smooth color. We want it to be a smooth blend between that very dark blood red and that very bright red to make it look like it's a rounded vessel with a shape, like a, a cylinder. So that's good. I'm going to hit OK. Next, you're going to go up to object, and this is where the magic happens. So I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what's going to occur. So here it is, we have our two lines. We know we have both lines selected because of this question mark. If I only had one line selected, a color is gonna show up and I'm not going to be able to blend. Notice make is, is off, there's nothing to blend with. You have to have multiple things selected to blend them together. Okay, both selected, object blend. Now I hit make, I think that's a little counterintuitive. I wish under blend options you could just hit make when you were done making your settings right, but we're gonna hit make. And now look at the magic. See how this has now blended those two strokes into one really beautiful vessel. Um, I probably learned this back in, we'll say 2007 or eight from a really amazing medical illustrator. And I just think it's such a fun little trick. And you can utilize that in so many different ways. All right, so now we're gonna be able to very quickly go through, do the same blend on every single one of these. Slow, just click through. You can't do all of them at once. You've got to very specifically only blend your sets of strokes. So you can't just grab everything. And I'm just kind of going through. Moving around. I'm using my right and left hand. I can always use my left hand to hit the keyboard and right hand to move it around. Select those two, blend, make. This is applicable in so many ways outside of medical illustration. You're trying to show some plumbing. Maybe you're going to be an architectural renderer and you're doing a really beautiful illustration of plumbing or maybe some a piece of furniture that's got a roundness to it. You know, this blend comes into play in a lot of different ways. So it's a great tool to have in your graphic design tool belt. Object blend. Okay, so now what you can see, and we're basically done, is I've got these blends. There's a blend, there's a blend, and it's just saying you've blended these two items into this one. You, um, so you can always get back to those if you had to. Your best bet is to get the colors right from the beginning. It can get tricky to get back into a blend that's been put on some objects and try to make adjustments. So think it through from the beginning. So I've got this vessel layer. I've got this reference layer that I don't need anymore. I've got these wrinkles. I've got my nails, hand base layer, and then I've got this temple layer that I also don't need. Um, so in the next, we're gonna hit save or left hand command S so that I'm just saving that way. So in the next lesson, we'll learn how to fix some of these little moments that look weird and make it look not natural with some really quick little steps. So good job, save and you're done.